The material presented is intended to augment one's enjoyment of J.K. Rowling's book, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, not act as a substitute. If you have not purchased a copy of the Half-Blood Prince, please discontinue your patronage of this production until you do. Chapter 8. Oh, hells no. The facts were these. Harry Potter is now 16 years, 3 weeks, 2 days, 7 hours old. He is currently paralyzed, laying beneath an invisibility cloak in a train 4 minutes and 27 seconds away from departing and returning to London. He has been paralyzed for 6 minutes and 12 seconds. Blood has been pouring into his mouth for 5. Oh, hells no! Axio wand! Harry thought as loudly as he could, hoping to get his wand to fly back to his hand so he could unfreeze himself. Axio wand! Harry thought, raising the volume on his inner voice. Hey there, wand. Harry mentally projected, taking on a more casual approach in case an inanimate object would better respond to a more pleasant tone. How you doing? Why don't you come on over here? I'll be your best friend! It's not like I'm asking you to paint my house. Cool air seemed to flood over him in a moment as the cloak flew up off of his crumpled form. Unfreezy peasy, said a sad woman's voice. With a flash of red light, <laughs> Harry was freed from his paralysis. He splayed out onto the floor, his knotted limbs relaxing as he coughed up blood. Watch her, Harry. Tea and biscuits and blood pudding. Tonks! It was Nymphadora Tonks, a friend and an alver. She seemed mousy and dowdy. The depression she had been under seemingly taking over all aspects of her life, leaving her looking frumpled and disarrayed. Uh, I mean, really, uh, who leaves a house like that? Does she even have a mirror? Hey! Let's leg it off the train. It's about to leave. Harry collected himself. He and Tonks ran off onto the platform just as the Hogwarts Express chugged away to London. Once they'd caught their breath, Tonks inspected him. How long did Malfoy have you frozen in there? How did you know? Your nose is broken and you are left paralyzed under your own invisibility cloak. Also, I'm an aura. Here, I'll fix your nose. She pointed her wand between his eyes. Fix nose. Nothing happened. Oh, right. Forgot the gibberish. Fixy, 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 nose wop boing. With a flash and a crack of cartilage, Harry's Ow. nose was set right. Let's get on up to the castle, what? Up and about. Bob's your uncle. She released a silvery patrol into the direction of Hogwarts. A large canine shape loped away. Maybe a dog, maybe a werewolf, we're not going to say which. Yet. After a long walk, they reached the front gates of Hogwarts. Granted, they could have gotten there far sooner if a witch of Tonks' talents had just enchanted a crate or something lying around the train station to fly them up to the gate, but they always had to do things the hard way. Soon enough, they were greeted by... Let's see, who's the worst possible person they could run into at that moment? McGonagall? No. No, she's strict, but she would be a welcome sight. Finch? No, he's surly, but has no personal agenda against Harry. I suppose it would have to be Snape, wouldn't it? Well, well, well. It seems as though Christmas has come early to Bastard Town said Snape, rubbing his hands together with joy before unlatching the gate and opening it. I'll take Potter from here, Nymphadora. Hang about. I meant for Hagrid to get the message. He was busy. I also carbon copied it to every single other member of faculty but you. Well, what does one expect from such a weak and unlovable Patronus? <gasps> Tonks looked as though Snape's words had slapped her in the face and straight down to her heart. Greasy head asshole thinks he's in charge of everything. Come along, everything. Potter. Snape said, resealing the protective wards, magic chains, and ethereal deadbolt behind them. Good night, Tonks. Harry shouted warmly. Uh, tea time and, uh, fi figgy pudding. But his attempts at Tonks-like colloquialism seemed to fall away into the dark, uncaring night as Snape ushered him up the path to the castle. Harry burned beside him, pouring rage into his heart like white-hot coals into an overflowing tin kettle. Don't worry, Dumbledore had said. Severus is good people. But Snape had never shown any kindness or warmth to anyone and had taken an almost malicious joy in making the lives of good people miserable. 
50 points from Gryffindor for your tardiness. Another 20 for your horrid muggle attire. Another 20, I think, for making a spectacle of yourself by putting all of that blood on your face and shirt. Another 10 for drawing an L on your own forehead. I think you've set a record, Potter. Triple negative digits before the dessert course. I I, I mean the pudding. I mean, really, why the hell do so many female readers like this ass clown? Harry endured Snape's tauntings in silence, trying to apply the few arclomantic lessons Snape had given him last year to send a mental image of Snape humping a donkey into the professor's head. He chuckled at the thought that his skills may not have been able to penetrate Snape's skull only because of the thick, tattered mass of greasy hair protecting it. You can't sneak in under your invisibility cloak, which, by the way, everyone seems to know about. And don't bother reporting if another student assaulted you. I don't see that being of importance. Come on, really, ladies? Harry walked as inconspicuously as he could to the Gryffindor table and sat beside Ron and Hermione. Oh my goodness, Harry! What happened to your face? You look awful! I'll tell you later. I bet I look like hell. Nah, mate. You look like the shit hell steps in and tries to scrape off its boot at the front door. You missed the sorting. Did the hat say anything interesting? Mostly dirty limericks this year. But we learned a lot about a man named Enos and a woman named Regina. Snape said Hagrid was busy. He doesn't look very busy. When to see Snape? Ron asked through a mouthful of gateau pudding. Let's see. Since pudding is like a pie or other starchy, creamy dish, and gateau is Spanish for cat, I'm going to assume that he was eating some cat pie. I'm comfortable with that, actually. I ran into him. I'll tell you later. Harry looked over at the Slytherin table where Malfoy was reenacting the events on the train. And I'm like... Bam! Right in his face. And he's all, ow, my nose. I'm all bleeding and helpless. Wah! I'm Harry Potter. Wah! Also, why do female readers like this guy? Come on! Now that we've ostracized 10 to 20% of our audience, we'd best move on. Welcome back, everyone. Dumbledore addressed the crowd from the podium. My, what a lovely year of magical education awaits you. While it's true that you don't get to use computers, you are going to be using magic, and that's pretty amazing. In addition, nobody here will be obligated to read Lord of the Flies. I'd like to welcome Professor Slugfoot Tuscamini to our staff. He'll be taking over his old position as Potions Master. Potions? Potions? The word traveled around the room. Potions? Said the Hufflepuff table. Potions? Potions? Is he teaching potions? Who's teaching dark arts if he's teaching potions? Queried the Glee Club. Meanwhile, Professor Snape will take over the position of defense against the dark arts teacher. Oh, hell no! Harry interjected. (coughs) Oh, um, I mean... Oh, hell no, sir. Oh, snap! said the Glee Club. Well, at least Snape will be gone by the end of the year, Harry said in more hushed tones to his friends. How do you figure that, mate? That job's jinxed. Everyone who takes it leaves, or dies. I'm hoping for death. Harry, that's a horrible thing to say. After all, Professor Snape is a respect... Well, he's a depend... He's very inte... Hmm. Well, he's a person, technically. Begora, that sounds like an interesting bet. Broke in Seamus, oh Irish man. By the rolling emerald hills of me homeland, I think I'll start a pool. Take an old bet. Far enough to get in on the action. We've got death and transferring to potions so far. I'll put down five sickles on eaten by devil snare, said Neville. No fight with a bear, pitched Dean. 